and we want to talk about the work of the spring. So calculating the work done by a spring. So by definition, the work energy theorem says that the work, you know, in the past, what we said here is that it was the force times the displacement. This is only true if it's a constant force. So for a spring force, which is variable, we cannot use we cannot excuse me define work this way what we have to do here is that we have to write it out in in detail now and so what we find here is that the work done is the area under the force versus x curve or graph. So, so then in other words, that the work done is then the area of F versus X. And picture-wise, what this means here is that if I have a plot and if I have a variable force, so I'm gonna say that this is a variable force and it has some curve. Maybe the curve goes like this and it's showing that it's not a constant curve. Then when I go and I calculate this area, this area right here is equivalent to the work done for this force versus time curve. So um, in the past, what we had here is that it was still a constant, if I had a constant force, then in this situation, all I had was a straight line and it was still this area. So in this case here, let's say that this was our average force and then this distance from here to here, that would be delta x. So if you looked at the area, you could see here is that the area was equal to f times delta x, exactly like what we did before. But we can't do that anymore. So now, for the spring force, What is the area? So if I look at this, let's say that I draw a curve like this. Now what I know about the spring force, the spring force is minus kx. And we're going to plot x right here. So that means here, 
is that this line here has to be a linear line with a negative slope here. So if I was to draw a line, let's say it looks like this right here. So what you're seeing here is that that's my spring force. And now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to start to look at this in terms of what actually happens here. So let's look at a picture here. So imagine that this is where we start at. I put a spring like this, and there's nothing attached, right? So there's nothing attached. So as soon as I attach something, now what happens here is that the spring has now stretched out. So what you're seeing here is that when you look at this thing, the rungs here have now been stretched, which imply that there's stored work. So I'm going to come over here to this point right here, and I'm going to call this distance now, because there's stored work, I'm going to call this distance right here x1. So I'm going to call this x1. Now, according to the work energy theorem, if I now take the spring and I stretch it even more so, so that it's down here. And so at this point, we're going to call this point x2. So if I compare, then the distance between here and there is then going to be delta x. So that means here is that if I move this from this guy to x2 here, you're going to find that the area under the curve follows this type of curve, this type of area right here. So this becomes the area. So if I want to calculate this area, I really have to calculate this between point x1 and x2. So the way we'll do this here is that to make the calculation easier, let's set x1 equal to 0. And then we're going to push it out to x2. The area that needs to be calculated is then this triangle. And so when I look at this triangle, you could see here is that I have a triangle that goes like this, and then it goes down. And it's going to go to, let's say, right here. Now, when I look at this, the shaded area is then going to be the area that we have to calculate. So what do I know? I'm going to say that this point, I'm going to call x1. And this point, I'm going to call x2. However, this thing right here represents the spring force. And the spring force says that this has to be minus kx. So if I look at the area, then the area tells me that it has to look something like this here. So according to our area, 
our area for a triangle, I could think of this as a rectangle, it has to be one half the height times the base. And in this case, it's going to be one half times minus kx times x. Let me be careful. That's not what I, I should, I, that's not the way I should have done this. I should have done it. No, I think I'm going to do it this way. And then when you write it this way, it'll be a little bit easier to envision this. It's it's really this distance right here. This is delta x right there, right? That's the distance that we're really looking at between these two points. So if I write this out, I'm going to get minus one half k x squared. But remember, this guy has to be adjusted because we wrote this in terms of x1 and x2. So what we're really saying is that the area is really going to be minus one half, where this is going to be x2 squared minus one half kx1 squared. And that represents the work of the spring. So now if I look at this thing, I could now put this all together. You know what? Let's not write it this way with the minus sign yet. Because the minus sign can get really tricky. Now, this is an important expression. And the reason why this is important here is that this expression comes up, up often when dealing with springs. So then we have a notation change. And our notation says is that from the work energy theorem, I'm saying here is that the negative work of the spring, this guy has to be the change in the spring potential energy. So now, here we go. What we said earlier up here is that the work is the area. Okay? The work is the area. So now, if I do this, I'm going to start on the side here. What we just calculated was this area. That's what the work is. But note that there's a negative sign. So when I write this out, note I have another negative sign right here where I get one half kx2 squared minus one half kx1 squared. And when I put this all together, you're seeing that I have a negative sign here, a negative sign here. We end up getting a term that reads one half kx squared minus one half kx1 squared. And this is what we call the spring potential energy. So once again, because this happens so often, we could then make a definition. The definition is, is that if I look at the work of the spring, we have an expression that we calculate that reads one half kx2 squared minus one half kx1 squared. We then define this one half k 
kx squared as u2 minus, maybe I should write u spring 2 minus u spring 1, which then gives us the spring potential where our notation change says that now, if we want to talk about the work of a spring that was stored, we write this. That's what we mean by the spring potential energy as being stored work. So as before, this term, just like that term, is meaningless. It has no physical meaning whatsoever. This term is meaningful because it talks about the change in energy. 